Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MH Optical Labs YouTube page. Today I got a pretty cool video for you. We're gonna talk about AR coatings. There's some good videos out there, but a couple things that I think they missed, and I wanna give you my take on AR coatings. So let's briefly talk about what AR coating actually is. Well, light forms a wave, right? And a wave is hitting that material and bouncing back. So what we're doing is we're putting a stack on top of the lens that counters the waves coming in. And when we counter the waves coming in, we flatten that wave and we're allowed to see right through the material. That's why AR coating is so important to put on your lenses. So an AR coating, anti-reflective coating, it's a thin film process. It's actually used in many other industries such as uh, circuit board making. What we do is we actually take metals and we burn them and evaporate them on the lens in a vacuum chamber. That's what you see behind me, a big vacuum chamber. Now in a minute, we're gonna open it up, take a look and show you exactly what's going on. But first, I'm gonna show you the metals that we do burn in the chamber. All right, so first up, I'm gonna show you the crucible here that we load to burn the materials. This one gets burned in our Cyrus 1100. Uh, every machine is different, but this is the one we use in that machine. And you'll be able to see it better when we take a look inside of the machine. First up is what we call our adhesion layer. This is a chromium silicon monoxide blend. It helps to adhere the rest of the stack to the lens. Next up is silicone dioxide. This is gonna be found in almost every AR coating out there. It's actually quartz, and as I said before, almost every AR coating on the market is gonna be burning silicone dioxide. Now here's where some of the processes can differ. This is zirconium. We burn zirconium in some of our processes here, but we're starting to switch to what's called titanium. This is the new stuff that we're gonna be burning, which is titanium. Should be giving us a harder, better AR coating. Uh, we still are using this, and some of the Crizol processes uses zirconium. Now this is basically all you need for a very good AR coating. Now again, it can differ from place to place, from machine to machine. We used to burn hafnium in our B12s, but everybody seems to be getting away from that. So that is the basic stack. Now, when we look at uh, premium stuff, this is what they call tin oxide. Now tin oxide is what we use as the anti-static in AR coating. Now that's gonna give you a little anti-static, so if any dust is floating around, it's not gonna to adhere to the lens, making it easier to clean in the future. And lastly, a popular thing is magnesium fluoride. Now this gets burnt after the hydro step and isn't necessarily part of the AR stack. A lot of people will put that on their lens to give you an anti-slip grip for edging. You might notice that on any AR coatings you get, there might be a blue grayish film on it and it wipes right off. Now again, it's a very thin layer that goes on top of the hydrophobic coating. That way you can wipe it off right after edging. And lastly, our hydrophobic coating. Now these get burnt last in, this, in the process, unless you're doing a anti-slip layer, then it's the hydrophobic coat, then the anti-slip layer. Now, they come in a couple different forms. They come in these pill versions, and they're doped with some kind of liquid, which burns in an evaporator inside the machine. They don't actually get burnt in the pockets here. And then there's pill versions, and then there's also a liquid version. Back when AR was first coming out on lenses, they were still trying to figure out that kind of system, and they were actually putting it on after it in different types of machines, and as well as dips and rubs. So, let's quickly talk about, should you or should your patients get AR coating? The answer is absolutely 100% of the time. What's our goal in getting glasses? Our goal is to improve our vision. So if we have a lens that's not coated with AR coating, we're hindering our vision. We're not allowing ourselves to see through the lens and we're not allowing people to see our eyes. We're allowing them to see the reflection and we're allowing ourselves to see reflection. We wanna see right through that lens as clear as possible to obtain the best vision possible. Now, let's quickly talk about what a premium AR is versus a not premium AR. In my eyes, a premium AR is an AR that gets a thermal dip hard coating. Now, the other option is a spin UV cured hard coat. Now, there are thermal cured spin hard coating, but the better hard coating is a dip thermal cured hard coat. You can control the thickness of it. It always comes with a primer. That way you're getting the best possible hard coating on the lens giving you a solid, uniform base. 
with spin coating, you're not spinning the front coat. You have to start with a blank that's already hard coated on the front, and then after it's been surfaced, you spin coat the back. Now, what's the problem with that? You're not getting the same coating on the front as you have on the back. With a dip coat, you can either strip and dip it, meaning you strip the factory hard coat and you dip and you put a uniform coating on the back of it, or in our other machine, we do an overcoat process where you overcoat the hard coat. Now that's still giving you a very good uniform hard coating. So now that we're starting to understand a little bit more about the process, what we burn, a premium AR versus a regular spin coat AR, now there's nothing wrong with either of the two. A premium dip coat AR is gonna take a little bit longer because you remember you have to wash it, then you have to strip it, you have to dip it, you have to let it cure in our oven, then it's ready to go in the chamber. Where a spin coat AR comes right from the surfacing lab already with that backside hard coat on there. Now there's benefits to having it quicker, but you are getting a truly better hard coating when you do a premium dip coat AR. Always ask for that dip coat AR. But let's talk really quickly about the green and blue. What's the difference? Really nothing. They are the same formula. However, the spectrum is shifted a little bit to the left for a blue lens. Let me show you. Here's our program on one of our spectrometers here. Now we can open up our spectrum here and we can get our process and we can look for our blue target. Now you'll see the blue target will load. This is what a blue target looks like. This is reflectance. Now we want our reflectance to stay low because we want to see through it. And this over here is our wavelength. Where the peak is, is what color we're going to get. So you see our peak here is over in the blue spectrum, which is 450 to 500 about. Now if I open up the other spectrum on the green side, you're going to see our peak is over here, moving more towards this side of the spectrum that we're burning the same exact chemicals in the same machine, but we're doing different thicknesses to achieve that different color of AR. Now, very quickly, we're gonna save uh, blue light ARs for another video because they're not an AR at all. They're more of a mirror. If I shoot them on the spectrometer here, you'll see that the reflectance is very high because it's actually blocking the light. We're actually doing the opposite of what ARs are trying to do. However, they are done on the exact same machines. We're putting more thickness on each layer to achieve more of a mirror-like effect to block the light from getting to the eye. So for an example, just so we can see, we'll shoot one of these blue blocking lens and we can see the reflectance shoot all the way off of our map here. Now it is a blue color, so you see how it lines up correctly with the blue, but our reflectance is very high. That's the difference between a blue blocking AR and the actual AR where we're, where we're allowing light to pass through the lens instead of blocking it. Now that we understand that the blue and the green is basically all preference in regard to the color, I like to explain how I explain AR to people. So what I like to do when I explain AR to patients or customers or people who really don't understand what AR is, I take two lenses, one with AR coating and one without. Now a lot of the times I see people explaining AR to people as, look, you see how it's white? That means it doesn't have AR coating. Look, you see how this is green? That has AR coating. Now, of course that's true, but however, that doesn't really explain what you're trying to achieve to the person trying to purchase AR. Now, what I like to do is forget about color. We're not actually trying to see the color. We don't want to see color, actually. We want to see through the lens. So, I take the lens without AR coating, I put it right in front of their face, and I wave. You see my hand right here? You see my camera right here? We can wave and you can see that. Now, that's a lens without AR coating. Then you take one with AR coating, you put it right in front of their face, and you show them that you really can't see it compared to this, where you can see my whole tripod and everything in this, and in this lens, you really can't see much at all. So that's the best way I can describe or show people the effects AR coating has on a lens. We're real excited to get our new Bueller 1100 into full production. We've been doing a couple test batches here and there, but not as true in full capacity. So we're gonna open the machine up, take a look inside, so maybe you could understand a little bit better how AR coating and thin films work. So here we are inside the machine. This is what they call a box coater. Now, we use these sectors, which go into the sector holder or carousel, and they go inside the machine. We'll then take rings and we'll load our lenses. Now this one, for example, is a drop-in ring. The lens is cribbed perfectly to the ring. 
and we place directly into the sector and the sector holds it. During production, this is gonna spin and keep spinning as the materials are deposited onto the lens. Now there's three sources inside of the machine. Now if we open the shutters, this is our ion source. What the ion source does is it etches the lenses. Picture it as sandpaper. So it prepares the lens for process so the actual AR or thin film stack can adhere to the lens well. Before they had ion sources in box coders or AR coders at all, we used to have to run everything through an ultrasonic cleaner. That way it roughed up the lenses just like the ion source does. Now we do that anyway with our spin coat work, but for our dip coat work, we used to have to run it back through an ultrasonic water bath to etch those lenses so the AR stack would adhere to it. Now with these ion sources, we don't really have a problem with that. On the left here, that's the evaporator boat. Now what that does is it sends a current through that boat and we put our hydro pill or our a liquid hydro on that. What's gonna happen is it's gonna heat that up, it's going to evaporate the hydro and blast it onto our lenses up top. Now that's one of the last steps that happen in the process. That's why they call it a top coat. And lastly, here's our crucible. Now, this just went through a burn so you can see how all the materials have been burned. Here's our titanium, our silicon dioxide, our ITO or our, our tin oxide, and more silicon dioxide in our chromium SiO2 mix, our adhesion layer. So that's after a burn what the material looks like. Now there's a few more things that go into this machine, but that's the basics. We have to clean it from time to time and sandblast these shields here. They get dirty and when they get dirty, the, the chamber is going to change and the color is going to shift. That's why every so often we have to sandblast these materials and that's why run to run, you're never really going to match the AR coating that came out of one batch to the next. That's why we always try to do the pair together so the AR coatings always match each other. Now we're going to load the crucible into the machine. Next up, we're going to load the hydro into the machine. Now the hydro goes on the thermal evaporator, not into the crucible like I mentioned before. Once the hydro is set up in the machine, we're ready to load the lenses into the chamber. I hope everybody has a little bit better understanding of my take on AR coatings. Let's just do a little recap here. AR coatings should be on everybody's lenses. That allows us to see through the lens, not the lens itself. We don't want to see the lens in frames. Next, always opt for a premium AR. What do I consider a premium AR? That's something that has a thermal dip coat. That allows us to have a uniform coating on the front and back, and it's much, much harder than any kind of UV cured spin coat. And lastly, don't focus on color so much when you're looking into AR coatings. Does the color really matter? No, it's just a different wavelength on the spectrum that we can see. Always show your customers, your patient, yourself, that you can see through the lens, not the lens itself. I'll show you one more time. Another great little tool we can make for you is this half AR coated lens. Now this is a really awesome way to show the patient or the customer AR coating because half of the lens has AR coating, you can really see it, and then half of it doesn't. So you can really see everything behind you melt away either as you rotate it, and you could really see everything go away when you use a half coated AR lens. So. Once again, I hope that cleared some things up for some people, help you understand better premium, standard, the difference between colors, taking a look behind the scenes inside of the chamber. Hope that showed everybody uh, a new thing you didn't know about AR coding. So stay tuned for more guys at MH Optical's YouTube page.